What is up everyone? Welcome back to another Eternal Update. I'm Jedi and as of January 6th, we have a couple of things to talk about. We find out when the new set is released. We find out some patch notes that they've modified in the last couple of days, a lot of patch notes, and we get a spoiler at the end of this episode. So going right into it, thanks to Twitter, we find out as they do the draft preview event where they inject 75 commons and uncommons into the current draft format. They also released get a taste of how Eternal will change when the new set drops next Tuesday. This means this is going to be January 11th, 2020 is when the set Echoes of Eternity drops. So thank you Twitter for that one. Going in, we have tons of patch notes, updating possible bug fixes and UI improvements. So February 4th, they did a lot. And I'm just going to read these off because some of these I've never experienced, some have, but I'm going to go through all of them that way. If they did happen to you, you get the update. So we're going to go through these. Improve the layout of relic arrays to prioritize showing relics with activated abilities at the front of the array. If they're still usable that turn. I like that a lot because a lot of times you miss things when you're like, oh yeah, I could have activated that or whatnot because at the end of the day, you only see one relic on top. So that's a good reminder. I like that. The Midnight Storm Gauntlet AI Dex has had its contents updated for better gameplay against the AI. Hangers from sites should no longer go off the screen when viewed on mobile devices. The Promises by Firelight campaign will no longer show a completed check mark if you have not yet defeated the fifth wing of the campaign. Fixed an issue where some users would see help tips for reminders that they already dismissed. You can see where that would be annoying. Fixed an issue navigating relic arrays for users playing with a controller. Fixed a user where Berserk was not represented, was not present the glossary of battle skills. Fixed an issue where users without advanced deck builder mode enabled couldn't see power cards in their markets. That's a little awkward. To improve deck builder usability, unknown, unowned premiums do not appear by default when crafting is enabled. Unknown premiums can still be viewed by selecting the premium checkbox in the advanced filters. Oh my god, that's going to be huge. Can't tell you how annoying it is to see all these like uh, le premium legendaries you don't have taking up space when you're trying to search for cards. I like that one. It's a minor one, but it's definitely a quality of life one. Fixed an issue where a user could not choose which card to negate if multiple enemy cards were on the stack at once. I actually came across this bug and reported it myself. I'm surprised it took this long for them to finally get around to it. I guess there were too many instances, but uh, I believe it happened with a site where a player used the site ability and then did something else and they were both on the stack and I had backlash in my hand and I was unable to counter the, I think it was the 4 for endurance part or maybe the berserk i don't remember but i was I, there was no way to s click the other spell because the second one they played or the first one was on top of it so that was extremely annoying uh so i'm glad they fixed that that's very i, I like that uh, let's see fix an issue where some effects that played spells or curses would present the card in the wrong presentation pile sometimes preventing interaction or blocking an opponent's ability to negate the effect Okay. All right. Individual card fixes here. Birthright will now properly work when replacing a site in play. Huh. So I guess the, oh, I guess the effects happen at the same time because it's the beginning of your turn. Okay, fair. Common cause is now cancelable. Cancelable? Cancelable? Cancelable during the prompt select an influence to gain. Okay, I like that. Several cards have had their projectiles F. The X or VFX, sorry, VFX updated to better indicate the scourge tar source target of cards affected. Decimating Waylay and then stealing an opponent's Falrock, the Outcast, will now correctly play the unit if you have the necessary primal and shadow influences. Oh, that's kind of neat. I never came across that interaction, but that that would that's kind of cool. Blurred Sticky Mullux cost reduction ability now properly updates when a stolen unit is returned to the previous owner. Fixed a bug where my mitotic wisp was counting deaths from other units when it was killed at the same time as them. For example, when multiple units died on harsh rule. Oh wow, that seems kind of busted. Street urchin's death s sound effect. Uh, virtual sound effects. Uh, okay, that virtual effect sound effect. Got it. Sound effect have been improved. Street urchin should no longer damage its owner if that player plays corrupt. 
Okay, because you're stealing their spell, so I guess it deals one damage. Because it can see, okay, I can see where that bug would be a thing. Last right, an Arc of Soul. Now properly say, choose a sigil to play when selecting sigils rather than their name. The bargain cards are now searchable in the deck editor when searching for market. Okay, oh, all right. There's another quality of life one. Heartstopper will no longer steal cards that are void bound when they are discarded. I feel like that's fair. That seems about right. Because you are discarding it and then it tries to steal it. So if it's void bound, it should, yeah. Fix an issue where Funeral Pyre wouldn't deal damage to one of the selected enemies if one of the selections was removed before the spell resolved. Waystone Fragments Hanger are now in the correct order. Bloodseeker stats should now correctly update in the void if attacked by, an, an, by a relic weapon. Fixed an issue where into cast into shadow when decimated would fail to kill the primary target if the only other possible target is killed in response. Ooh, yeah, that would be a problem. Killing the initial target's fine, but killing the second one fizzling the spell is incorrect considering the way it's worded. Bellrock's choice should no longer draw curses from the void if it is blocked by Aegis. And templating um all right yeah we'll go into it templating updates these cards have not functionally changed but had their wording updated to better reflect how their abilities work to improve text length and clarity vizier's tablet has had its templating change to say pay three to make the enemy player discard the top card of their deck if it was a unit you gain one health in cold blood has had its template updated to say kill an enemy unit if it was justice, the enemy player discards each copy from their hand and deck. They get void bound. You lose all justice influence. Iceberg Skyrshot has had its template updated to say when you play a unit, it deals one damage to the enemy player. Decimation has had its templated change updated to say deal 10 damage. Decimation can't be negated or stopped by Aegis effects or by Aegis. Wump Party Starter has had its template updated to say when you play a Yeti, it deals 1 damage to the enemy player, your other Yeti have plus 1 plus 1. Shattered Hopes, choose a card with cost 4 or more from the enemy player's hand, they discard it, decimate, Shattered Hopes can't be negated or stopped by Aegis. If the enemy player has an Aegis, take it. Nakova and Mullet, which is the newer updated one, the ones from Echoes of Eternity. Summon, deal 4 damage to each enemy. This can't be stopped by Aegis. Enemies killed this turn get void bound. Edict of Shavka. Edict of Shavka can't be negated or stopped by Aegis. Alright, so long story short, let's see uh, what's a different one. So all the Aegis ones have just been reworded to be a little bit clearer. Preserver of Dualities. When you play a Radiant, play a 1-1 one, one Wisp. Disassembler. When one of your Grenadines dies, deal 1 damage to the enemy player. Valina, Valley, uh, Valley Searcher. When you play an Explorer, dinosaurs, uh, Explorer, dinosaurs in your hand get plus one, plus one. Fortune Stranger. This one's an update, though. When the player plays a Stranger, that player draws a card. Oh, I guess they said they didn't change the... Don I felt like it only drew you a card, but I guess if your opponent plays a Stranger, draw... All right, fair. Sorry, I digress. And uh, where are we at? End of story. Tribute, end of story, can't be negated or stopped by Aegis. All right, so those are the updates that went down on the 4th, but we also have a couple updates that came in on the 5th. This won't be nearly as long, so thank you so much for sticking with me here. Fixed an issue where Ross the Walking Glacier would retain ineligible states when played after being killed. So what this was, we saw this where you can attack while it was shifted. That seems extremely busted because you can't target it and it's unblockable. So they fixed that. That was a good one. Fixed an issue where Willbreaker Shades put a curse on all enemy units instead of only flying units. Huh? Fixed an issue so Tomb Protector should allow its owner to steal their opponent's relics with display of purpose properly. Fixed an issue so cards that discard at the end of turn should behave correctly. Uh, where co uh, Fixed an issue where cost change was not remembered on zone transitions. That would have been a bit of an issue. And fixed an issue that some players encountered while trying to log on in, and they can log in now. So easy enough. All right, guys, those are all the patch notes uh, in the past two days of updates. We'll see if they do some more when the new set releases once again on Tuesday of this coming week, which is the 11th. And we do have another spoiler 
And this one is Hammer of Glory. Hammer of Glory is a plus four, plus five relic weapon at rare for five fire, fire, justice, justice. And it reads, your avatar can attack sites. When avatar attacks, when your avatar attacks a unit, silence it. So I'm super excited for this card considering I am an armory player or like armory. So this is fantastic. The fact that it could hit sites, they gave it four attacks. So that means it could take out pretty much every site in the game clearly. So we appreciate that. And it does have charge, you know, essentially because you could attack the turn you play it. So it's a good way to get around your opponent's game plan of hopefully having removal and things like that to protect their site. And silencing a unit is quite relevant. You can take out things that have double damage. You can take out things that have, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, outcast, for example, it gets bonuses based off of how much influence you have. That will turn into a zero one. So... I believe I could be wrong, but I believe it happens when you attack before damage is dealt, considering the fact that that's typically the way other effects have worked, like when a unit attacks and things like that. So, yeah, I'm super excited for this card. Let me know in the comments below if uh, Hammer of Glory is something you are interested in, dreading for it, and if any of these major patch notes made a big difference in your game play. Game play. But alright guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Once again, if you made it this far, feel free to hit that like and subscribe button so you get notified whenever other videos go up to date. Of course, you can stream, catch me streaming live every Sunday, Monday, Tuesday at twitch.tv slash Jedi underscore EJ. That'll do it guys. Until next time, happy gaming.